Welcome back everyone to another Minecraft video. Today it's kind of a continuation on from the last video. As you can see we still have some of our villages. Most of them have died which is quite normal for my worlds, especially survival worlds, which um, as you can tell this is. I mean, all of this netherite I mined, it uh, was quite difficult. But either way, so today we're going to continue on and we're going to talk about good trades that some villages have. Now, as you can see, here are our villages. And bear in mind, first of all, there are two good trades, or two types of trades I'm looking at. First of all, it's what you can get with emeralds, and also what you can give to get emeralds. So a key thing in your survival world is, you know, getting as many emeralds as you can. And so what you want to do is get the resources you can get, quite simply, and then you can just uh, trade them in for emeralds. So let's get through these villages. So these villages, there are seven of them over here, of each, uh, each of them. I have cured or zombified and cured five times so now they're like maximum level so they absolutely love me and these trades that you're about to see will happen all the time so as you can see I don't have here of the village and these villages I mean if I hit them maybe their price will go up a bit but then they'll go back down to what they are right now so yeah let's get started from the left so here we have the Fletcher with the fletching table as his workstation as you can see some good trades here, you know, one emerald for 16 arrows. A really good one to see is the 10 gravel for flint. And all you need to transform that gravel into flint is one emerald. That's a good deal, especially if, you know, you have loads of gravel lying around and you just want that flint. There you go. Quite simple and easy. And then you can actually trade in one flint for one emerald. So again, if you have loads of uh, flint lying around and you want some emeralds, that's quite good. And similarly with string or feathers, I mean, imagine if you had a chicken farm, or like an automatic one, which I might make a video on. That's like an endless amount of emeralds. But you can also get enchanted crossbows and bows. Now, I've got quite bad enchantments on these. But you can get really good ones from power and infinity and everything else that you want. Obviously, it's an element of luck, so you can't really, unless you use your coding and your amazing commands, you can't actually say what villager, or what enchantments the villager will get, uh, give you, rather. But... You know, it's an element of luck, especially since these are the last um, two inven uh, not inventory trading slots, so master and one before. So you can't really, with like the librarian, as we're about to see, just take up his workstation and then put it back down when you see that he has a good trade. So yeah, let's move on to the farmer. So this is the farmer with his composter workstation. Now the farmer is an excellent villager because, let's say you have a huge food farm, you can actually trade in loads of um, food for emeralds. So, for example, here we have the potato for the emeralds. One potato, one emerald, excellent, excellent price. One pumpkin, one emerald, another excellent price. One melon, one emerald, amazing. So, especially because you can actually automate pumpkin and melon farms if you're good with redstone, you can get, again, an unlimited, endless supply of emeralds very, very cheaply. You can see here, it also sells golden carrots, which I will maintain are the best food source in the game. They have the best saturation, so they'll last you the longest. And you know, they fill up three hunger bars, which I know, you know, steak fills up more and raw pork chops, etc. But golden carrots will actually last longer. So, golden carrots are what you want to do, what you want to eat, especially since they are actually easier to get than steak. I mean, steak needs to kill the cow, and then if you don't have fire aspects, you need to smelt it. This one, you have like a simple emerald supply such as, you know, let's say, the flint or a chicken farm, and then bam, you trade in emeralds, and then bam, you trade for golden carrots. Very, very simple. Let's move on to the armorer. So his uh, workstation is a blast furnace, and he can sell quite good stuff. So first of all, look what he would trade for an emerald. So literally, one coal for an emerald. And coal is quite simple to get. And again, one iron for an emerald. Now the armorer doesn't always do this, so there's a good chance he won't actually sell, uh, you can't sell iron to him. But just bearing in mind that, you know, it is possible. One iron ingot for an emerald. Coal and iron are pretty easy to get, especially if you have an iron farm. And also you can get a bell, it's quite useful for sorting out your village, and it's unobtainable otherwise, unless you actually come across a village. So that's quite cool. So a diamond from emerald, yeah, maybe not, maybe not. But also, again full diamond armor for four emeralds only so that is four coal or four iron or four diamonds for full set of diamond armor again the enchantments are random so fire protection one fire protection one for the falling two so these are decent i would say especially for one emerald i mean you can't complain and then you have unbreaking one for the helmet 
and then I'm breaking three protection of three thorns, one for the diamond chest plate, which is amazing. So, for example, I'm breaking, that's a top level of unbreaking. Thorns, there's one more level of thorns, but I mean, think about it. If you buy two of these and combine them together, you get the best protection and the best thorns, and already the best unbreaking. So, that's quite good, and it'll be fairly cheap, I would think so, experience wise. Obviously, you can't get my swords, but hey ho, uh, that's a secret how you get that. Then we have the leather worker. Again, one leather for one emerald. That's amazing. And even one flint for an emerald. So again, you can have the Fletcher and the leather worker. You, know, you can sell them your flint and get huge, huge stacks of money from it. Or emeralds. You know, what emeralds is money in this game. But also, what's quite interesting is leather horse arm, which I don't think you can get normally any other way. But leather horse armor is great because you can dye it, so you know it doesn't offer as much protection as iron, gold, or diamond armor. But you can dye it so you can you know, sort out your horses, and it's all quite nice. And also saddles, you know, saddles can be difficult to, to come across, but I mean, one emerald for a saddle that is an excellent, excellent deal. Also, if you want leather armor, I suppose. I mean, up to you, do you? Then we come to the toolsmith. So again, one. Iron ingots for one emerald is amazing. Also, one of these two slots can also be taken up by the coal trade. So again, one coal for an emerald, an excellent deal. Now, the good thing is with this guy, is you can get most of your diamond tools. So say you want a nice shovel, efficiency two, I'm breaking two. That's an amazing shovel. Diamond hoe, instead of actually using two diamonds for it, oh no no, just use one emerald for it, which you can literally trade in with one iron ingot or one coal. So amazing. And also look at this pickaxe. I'm breaking two fortune one. I mean, think about it. For one emerald, that's quite a good pickaxe to get. Now, if you do want your axe and your sword, you will need the weaponsmith. So his workstation is the grindstone, which I think is over here. Yes, this one here. So if you want to get an axe or a sword, then you can't really trade in with the toolsmith. You need to actually have a weaponsmith. So like I said, use the grindstone as a workstation and you're good to go. So let's go on to now one of the most underrated villages, and this is the Cleric. Look at the trades, so one of the flesh for one emerald is amazing. This is genuinely like zombies are everywhere, you can easily farm them. I mean, imagine if you have an automatic zombie farm, you know, using a zombie dungeon. You can easily get loads of emeralds from that. You can also get loads of lapis lazuli. Like obviously you can mine it, but you know, let's say you want a huge build. So you can easily trade in loads of them over obviously a substantial amount of time and you don't need to mine a lot for it and especially if you know you just want to enchant something quickly and you realize you ran out of lapis lazuli instead of heading back down into the mines just go to the cleric he'll sort you out really nice and quickly similarly for glowstone so say you ran out of glowstone you don't need to go all the way to nether then you know glowstone can be difficult to mine because it's up in the roofs just go to this guy he'll sort you out same with ender pearls obviously ender pearls i mean Endermen are like, I suppose, later on in the game, they're fairly easy to kill. But early on, they can be quite tough and they do loads of damage. But you can easily get in loads of ender pearls. One emerald for the ender pearl. Again, with some of the trees you can get for emeralds. This is an excellent, excellent price. And finally, we have the bottle of enchanting. So, obviously, you can't really have too, too many of them because the villager needs to reset his um, stock. But... So you again, you want to enchant something quickly, but you know, a few levels off. Just buy some bottles of enchanting, and then bam, you're good to go. Finally, we go on to the librarian. The librarian, first of all, obviously can sell you any book in the game apart from Soul Speed. So, unfortunately, Soul Speed you have to get from the piglins. A librarian, a librarian wouldn't actually sell that to you. But things like mending, obviously efficiency, sharpness, and so on, he can get that for you. And again one emerald and a book for efficiency five so let's say you have loads of tools that you want to enchant with efficiency five it's literally one emerald and one book per that efficiency five enchantment and also you have a good chance of getting a second enchanted book in the second tier this one's blast protection one so yeah but some other good trades are the glass so say again you have a build or you know you don't want to get sand or the desert is too far away so just Get some glass from the librarian, and he always will um, have that trade. Similarly, with clocks and compasses, again, you know, they're not too too hard to make, or you could just trade in for an emerald. And last but not least, an amazing trade is a name tag. So, those are actually quite like 
you can say for example for the saddle you know they're quite rare but you can trade them around you know you can put on the saddle on the horse and then if you don't want to use that horse anymore you can just take it off and put it on another one you can't do that with a name tag and you can't craft them either and they are fairly rare but but one emerald for a name tag that's a steal obviously what a good good um trade so yeah i mean there are obviously other villager professions out there but these are the ones that i've highlighted as having amazing amazing trades so yeah I think that's the end of the video, so thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and make sure to share, subscribe, and obviously stay safe, so goodbye.